Hi, my name's Dan, and this is a video in a short series about using vectors in Unreal. Uh, we're getting towards the end of the series, and uh, if you've been following along with the series, uh, you'll know that we've been doing uh, various manipulations of vectors. Uh, we've used uh, adding vectors together, we've used uh, 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 taking vectors away from each other, so minus between vectors, we've used multiplication to multiply a vector by um, an amount to change its length. Uh, so, and these three things are all quite similar to normal, uh, normal um, numerical operations: the adding, taking away, and multiplication. But uh, there are a couple of uh, mathematical concepts for vectors that don't exist for normal numbers. And these are called products. One of them is the dot product, the other is the cross product. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the dot product. Um, so mathematically, just hold on to your hat so I'll describe it. Mathematically, if you take two vectors and you ask, uh, you want what's called the dot product between them, the end result is a number, is not a vector. And the number is determined by the length of the two vectors multiplied by the cosine of the angle between those two vectors. A little bit of maths alert. Uh, I don't know if you remember back to your cosine, your sine, and your tangents. Um, and but, and then multiplication, I think you can remember that. Um, so we're going to use the dot product for a couple of vectors uh, to create a an interesting effect. The uh, what I've got here as a setup is actually the the end of the last video that we did. But I'll give you a very quick uh, look through what's going on, uh, just so you know if you're just picking this one up in isolation. Um, so I've got a, a couple of constructs. We can ignore this pole construct with this ball. That ball's going to follow us around. It's not important for what we're doing in this uh, in this video. Uh, the one that's important is this. Mirror, we've got a ball which is being mirrored, and although that's only quite small as a mirror, um, it's effectively a mirror facing this way, but it acts across the whole of our world. So it's as if the whole world has got this huge mirror, not for visual things, but just for this ball. So as we move the player around the world, that ball mirrors our location. And I'll just demonstrate that. There it, there it is. As we go up, it goes up with us as we go across, it moves as we go in and out, it moves in a mirrored way. And we've done that using vectors uh, inside the blueprint for this mirror. Uh, so let's have a very quick look at what we're doing for that, uh, just to uh, help us get a hang of uh, what's going on. Um, so it's, it's a fairly small script. We're finding a uh, the vector which is between the mirror and the player, so this is pointing from the mirror to the player, uh, which is out here, and we're reflecting it using um, a vector which is the forward vector of the mirror of that blueprint uh, to give us a resultant vector. We're adding that to the location of the mirror so that we can get a location in space, which is where we put the ball. And the reason for talking through that is we're going to reuse some of this code, what we're going to do. Uh, what are we going to do, you might ask? What effects we're going to want, or what I want to affect, is something where this mirroring happens, but it only happens whilst the player is in front of the mirror. Now, actually, we can't get behind the mirror because the ball is blocking us. What we're going to do is we're going to make it so that it's effectively got a visibility cone. It's going to have quite a wide visibility cone, so it's going to be able to look out from that mirror almost all the way around here. But around here, that ball will stop following us and it will just stay still in the air and so we'll be able to move past it. And when we're around the back, which we will be able to do, it won't be following us anymore because this mirror effectively uh, is going to be semi-intelligent in the sense that it's going to be able to see us. It'll be able to look through these steps and the other things that are in the way. So it's not as intelligent as it could be. Um, and this is a this is a cone of sight, which is quite a common thing to do in art of, in AI in uh, in Unreal. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this using a dot product inside here. So we want to get 
uh, the dot product between the normal vector, which is the vector, vector that's pointing straight out forwards from that mirror, um, which we've got, and the vector from the mirror to the player, which is this one here. Now, I said it earlier, so I'm going to repeat it now. Uh, the dot product gives us the length of uh, one vector multiplied the length of the second vector multiplied by the cosine of the angle between them. Now, what we're actually after for this cone of view is the cosine of the angle between them. That's the useful thing. So in order to make the lengths not have any effect, we need our vectors to be of unit length, otherwise no known as normalized vectors. Um, so for that, we just need to normalize this vector. And the other one, these uh, three vectors that are come out, broken out from the rotation of a, an actor, they're a forward vector, um, a right-hand sideways vector, and an upwards vector. Uh, and they're all, as a matter of course, unit length. So uh, that's no problem. Uh, if we just type in DOT for dot product. Yeah. So that now is the cosine of that angle. Now, I don't know if you remember the graph of a cosine, um, but uh, when the angle is zero, cosine is one. When the angle is 90 degrees, cosine is zero. Um, and when the, Similarly, when the angle is minus uh, 90, the cosine is zero. So it's really useful for these kind of, uh, these kind of sight cones uh, because all you need to do is to give it a limit to how low you'll allow that cosine to go. So 90 is uh, looking at, a 90, uh, at 90 degrees, obviously, uh, which is quite good for peripheral vision. But you must bring that down a bit. You just raise uh, the amount that you'll let this go by. You could convert this into uh, degrees by doing a, a, an anti cosine, but there's no point. You can just do it using the cosine of the angle and using a comparison. So I'm going to do a comparison against 0 0.3, which is a fairly uh, wide cone, um, and we're going to make this change of location dependent on it being within that side cone. Um, so we're going to put a branch in here, and the nice thing about dragging off from there and typing branches is that it automatically wires it all up for you. Um, and this layout's not perfect, but that's fine. So let's see if that works. So we've got our ball, it's coming round, and hopefully, when we get to a certain point, it stopped following as it goes further out. And there we are, it's flicked back to the other place. So as we get past that point where the cosine is uh, 0 0.3 and below, then it stops moving and I can get around behind. I can jump over this ball, stand on top of that. Uh, and everything's fine until I then go back into the line of sight here and suddenly it appears. Once again, as I move towards it, it stops moving. So that's given us a line of sight effect. We can narrow that if we want. So let's um, let's have a look at doing that. And go back in and just let's make this a higher number. Let's make it 0 0.7 and see uh, how narrow that cone is. Uh, It's appeared around here, but it stops really quite early. So the, the cone of sight is only about that much. Um, mirroring there, move there, I can see everything's slightly further in. Yes, it's still there. As I go further in, then I get to a point where it's stopped. So there we are, that's using a dot product to do a sight cone effect. And that's it from me for now.